Hey, it's uh, Pastor Jeff, and uh, and uh, so looking forward to sharing with you today uh, in Luke chapter 18. This is the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, and we'll get to it in just a minute. But a few things just to kind of throw at you, just to again, where you know this past uh, this past week we were able to you know open up a few things, you know, at different you know, restaurants at 25% capacity and things like that. And, and things are progressing along. And, uh, and I, I just want to tell you guys, I, the, one of the hardest things for me is that I just, I just miss you guys. I miss seeing you. I miss, I miss seeing your faces. I miss, I miss sharing with you. I miss talking with you. I miss everything that during this time that happens, but but pretty soon we'll be able to get back together. And, and you know, we've been asked, when is that going to happen? Well, <clears throat> if everything stays according to plan, which y'all all know, right? Nothing has gone according to plan so far. But uh, June 7th would kind of be according to the, the plan that the government's on. But y'all know as well as I do, can't hold me to that. Uh, because if, you know, if there's a spike and they shut everything else down, then obviously that's all going to change. But just by way of planning, you know, this we'll be looking at. The cool part, guys, about about here. Number one, we're learning a whole lot of how to share with you. I'm even learning how to talk to a camera, which is really hard for me. And it was really hard for me, but but I'm, I'm envisioning talking to you as best I can. So uh, so it's just a, I don't know, it's a, it's a, it's a neat thing because we actually are, are um, uh, we're actually in a great spot. Um, you know, we have a large auditorium and if we only had one service, then we would, we would mostly fill it up. But, uh, but we have three, so it really spreads people out. And we will take the, the covers off, you know, and the drapes. And the great thing about it is, I believe with all my heart, is that when we do come back, many people will be able to feel safe coming because you'll really be able to spread out in here and really, really social distance. So, so uh, we'll do all that we can to make sure that everything is safe. And, uh, and we'll just be praying for that time. I, uh, I can't tell you, <clears throat> I can't tell you how how important that is uh, and how much I'm looking forward to it. Also too, we do understand that when we do all come back together, there'll be a good, good, good percentage of you. Uh, I'll be sharing real soon when we get our surveys back, but there are probably, I don't know, 20 to 30% of our folks who, uh, who may not feel comfortable coming yet. Well, we're, we're really wanting uh, to continue this online presence, especially with our small groups you know, and with the with Zoom and then other things now that are coming out on Facebook that we can use to put groups together, you know, in a virtual group. And it's it's not what's best, but but it but it but it is it is it is pretty cool. And so it keeps people connected. So so I would really like for you, uh, if you are a normal attender, but you know, okay, I'm not gonna be back for for a while because of uh, you know you know, it's my situation. It's not good for the exposure or whatever. I would really consider jumping on and getting in uh, kind of a, a, a virtual online class or whatever, or be a part of something uh, of one of our, our groups. And, uh, and so it just is a, I don't know, it's just real, real, real important. And we know we're going to have to get better at this. We're working on it. We're trying to ramp everything up. It's going to make it easy and give people instructions who don't know how to do all those things. So I'm really, uh, I don't know, I'm excited about having that and introducing that. Because up to this point, guys, we've kind of just been all about what happens here at the service. And then those of you who are watching at home, you know, uh, you know, uh, you can join in, but it's all, but here we're, we're really starting to think about how can we help with people make this available for people that, that when they're out of town, you know, they can still be a part if they want to. And so there's a lot of cool things going on, a lot of neat things going on, a lot of hard work going on, and I'm uh, I'm excited about it. So anyway, I'll stop with all of that. It took a little longer than I wanted to, but I I, uh, I feel like I'm doing the weekend update here. Uh, and so, uh, but anyway, so um, but I I just I just I'm just I'm actually excited about uh, about what's going on. The other thing too that has just been such a thrill to me, and I I shouldn't be surprised. But just just your faithfulness in in attending, um, we actually are you know, having more in the services you know online now than we do you know that that 
you know, quite a bit more. And then, um, and then the, and then the giving, uh, and you know, it, it was, it was down a little bit for a couple of weeks when we first started, but, but guys, it zoomed right back up to, to, to where it was. I <clears throat> thank you for your faithfulness. You know, I feel weird saying that because I don't like people telling me, thank you for, for giving to the church. I don't, I'm going to say, I don't, I don't dislike it, but I, I'm kind of like, no, that's, that's who I am. That's what I want to be. And so uh, you can thank for me for our faithfulness, but that's what I wanted to do for you. So, but that has been a huge blessing. I was talking to DJ and missions, the giving is doing fantastic. And so uh, we're, we're on pretty good track for our, our children's building. So, um, so anyway, it's all, all rolling along pretty good. All right, well, let's take a look now. T today's title uh, is the Pharisee and the tax collector. The Pharisee and the tax collector. It was a parable J Jesus told, and it has huge repercussions, huge repercussions in understanding what the gospel means. It is, uh, <clears throat> it is, it is so amazing to me because I, I am a student, right? I am a student of, um, of history, uh, especially, especially after after the birth of Christ, uh, because just the sheer impact on the world of what Jesus did is, is amazing. But um, I, I remember I've read a lot of the, the writings of Martin Luther, and, um, and it's so incredible in, in the 1500s, he was born in the late 1400s, the 1500s, the church had gotten so far away, so far away from what the scriptures taught, and it got down to just traditions and things that where the gospel was actually lost. And, um, and, and Martin Luther, you know, there's been a lot written about him, a lot, a lot critical about him. But the one thing that he did do is that he did jolt people back into, what does it mean to believe, be a believer in Christ? And so much of it ex is explained in this simple parable, the story that Jesus told. It's called the Pharisee and the tax collector. And, um, and the three things I want to talk to you about, it's real simple, real simple. And so I'll be able to just to, we'll go through this really quick and, and then it'll all fall together. But the, the three things I want to tell you about are the two men, the two prayers and the two outcomes. So, so that's what we'll be talking about today. So let's talk about number one. Let's talk about the, uh, the two men, all right? Chapter, Luke chapter 18 in verse 10, it says, two men went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. And so Jesus, again, you and I don't understand so much about it because we don't have Pharisees, right? We have tax collectors, but, but you know, they don't come by our house unless, <laughs> unless we hadn't paid in years, right? And so this is much different th at the time Jesus lived. But, but Jesus came up with a story to prove a point, to teach something. As we found out a few weeks ago, that Jesus says that the secrets of the kingdom of heaven are found in these parables. And when you begin to really look uh, at these parables, um, you know, we don't have this down on your screen, but if you take a look at Luke chapter 18, verse 9, it says this. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves, all right, that they were righteous and that they treated each other for contempt. So Jesus was trying to confront the common misconception of what it meant to be right with God, what it meant to be righteous was what that means, of what it meant to be, to be his, right? And uh, what it meant to be his follower. And it's the exact opposite of what the world normally thinks. And it's the exact opposite in the time of Jesus. The Pharisees, let's just explain these two. The Pharisees obviously were the ones who looked at themselves as, as righteous because they would look down on everybody else. And, and then they, they themselves just thought that that made them right with God because of the way that they lived. It's, this is a shock. Sometimes when people, I mean, because guys, I would be honest, I would, I would say more than half of what we would call the Christian denominations would teach that a person is right with God by the way he lives. And I want you to understand the scriptures don't teach that at all. And that's what Martin Luther came up with because the church had descended into 
into some bad times to where the great grace of Christ was sold. The church would sell it, you know, indulgences and all the crazy stuff that Luther stood up against. That is all covered right here in this little parable. Now, Pharisees were were, were the religious people of their day. They were not just religious, but they were what we would call ultra-religious. They were very conservative. They followed all the little rules, right? They, uh, I mean, from the outside, they were highly disciplined, extremely committed uh, to following God's commands. And, and so, I mean, as I've told you before, I mean, they almost, they almost got neurotic about it because, you know, as far as tithing goes, you know, you'd have your household plants. Usually the plants in a household at that time were spices. So if a, if a, if a, if a plant had 10 leaves, you would pluck off one leaf and give it to God as being a tithe. So they, they had how many steps you could step on, take on the Sabbath. They had their lives down to, to a religious ritual pretty much 24-7. They prayed several times a day and they fasted once a week. And you'll see that a little bit in here. So the Pharisees were looked at, actually at the time, they were looked at as being, uh, as being godly, spiritual. It's kind of what you want to attain to. Now, so Jesus picks one at this end of the spectrum. And then he picks one down here at this end of the spectrum, the tax collector. Uh, the publican, whatever you would like to say, but the tax collector was one of the most hated people of his time. Uh, not that they're loved today, but but the tax collectors of their time were almost 100% uh, crooked. Uh, and, and who they were was, is that the Romans obviously were smart. The Romans would come into town uh, or conquer an area. And then obviously paying your taxes was a huge deal. So, um, they would employ uh, native people to take up taxes because they knew everybody. And so it was former Jewish people who were taking up taxes from their, from their fellow Jews and giving it to the Romans. And then, you know, the Romans didn't care if they overtaxed and then they pocketed it themselves um, and as long as they got their cut. And so... They were considered traitors. They were usually ostracized. And therefore, they banded themselves together with the, with the lower dregs, if you will, of society. Usually, when you look in the Bible, uh, the, the tax collectors and prostitutes, the tax collectors were somewhere beneath the prostitutes in the social rank. So Jesus picks out two extremes and says that they both go to the temple to pray. And so I want you to hear... I want you to hear. I want you to hear the master storyteller sharing uh, to help people to to understand that it doesn't make one right with God because uh, because of your good works. It's basically the scripture teaches over and over again. It teaches, but really specifically here. So those are the two people. All right. So the two men. Here's the two prayers. All right. Prayer from the Pharisee. Here it is. Uh, the Pharisee stood by himself. Right, which is interesting. Um, he 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 stood over by himself. Therefore, there he's. He, I think he's standing as he's gotten away from everybody, and he's kind of looking up to God, all confident. And this is what he says: God, I thank you that I'm not like other people. Right? You gotta like that. Uh, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. So he's actually thanking God for him being such a, a great person. And he was actually confident that he was right with God because he was such a good person. And, uh, and I want you to know the scripture teaches the ap opposite of that. I even still hear people say today, well, they live such a good life. They, they, uh, they must be a, a believer. Yeah. You know, you really don't know because you're not you're not, you're not right with God because you've lived a good life or haven't good, lived a good life. You're right with, with God because of what Christ did at the cross. And that's the only thing. And so Jesus tells this story for that very reason. So you got this guy, you know, thinking that he's not like thieves and prostitutes. Or, and then he even has a show and tell item or even like this tax collector over here. 
And then he starts listing, these, those are the things he doesn't do. All right, he doesn't commit adultery, he doesn't steal, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't, you know, betray his own country like the tax collectors. And then he starts talking about some of the things he does. Here's what he does. Um, he says, I fast twice a week uh, and I give a tenth of all that I get. Now, according to the strict Pharisee tradition, uh, it was mandatory to fast once a week. So this guy ramped it up. I mean, he was doing double. I mean, he was fasting twice a week. And it's almost like, ooh, what a godly guy, you know? But remember this, that is not what, what makes a person a strong believer. Um, understanding who you are in Christ is what does, which we'll get to a little bit in a minute. So that was this Pharisee praying about himself. Now, and here, here we go, but the tax collector stood at a distance. So you got Mr. Covenance, you know, who's praying and saying, oh God, you know, you're lucky to have me, right? And, you know, I'm not like all these others, so you're lucky, really, really lucky to have me. And then you got this tax collector. He knows who he is. And he doesn't even feel worthy to be there, so he, he kind of hangs off at a distance. And he says, uh, he says, God, he says he would not even look up to heaven, Right? He said, um, but he, he beat on his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. sinner. The reason he beat on his, his breast, that was a Jewish thing, that and tearing clothes. Tearing clothes represented your heart was breaking, but, but beating on your chest, your breast, it says here, is the whole thought of pain. I'm, I'm, in other words, you have pain here when something breaks your heart. And... Um, so he was brokenhearted over his own sinfulness. Listen to me. This is not saying that, you know, this tax collector, you know, was the better person. No, this, what this is trying to get across is that being right with God is not about what you do or don't do, right? It's about where you put your faith and trust. It is a powerful concept. And so, so he's... He's there and he says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. In other words, Lord, I don't deserve it. What is mercy? Mercy is getting is not getting what you deserve. That's why he says, Lord, be merciful to, to, to me, a guy who's a sinner. That is a guy who has no hope other than you. And see, this Pharisee put his hope totally in his own good works. And this this tax collector put his hope in, in God's mercy. As you begin to see these things, upon this really rests the foundation of what people, what we would call the gospel. And as Jerry shared with you with Martin Luther, what he did, what people call the Protestant Reformation, and people try to make so much politically out of it and all of the rest. But in reality, Martin Luther, his 95 theses, all had to do about this little parable, or the just shall live by faith, which we'll read in just a minute. Understanding that one is made right with God uh, because, not because of his own good work, but because of what Christ did for him at the cross. So, so that's what blew this one up. So anyway, so then number three is the two outcomes. I tell you that this man, that is the tax collector, rather than the other, went home, ju went home justified before God. Okay, now that was scandalous at the time Jesus would tell the story. You know, that doesn't seem right, that this guy's lived such a terrible life and this guy's lived such a moral life and then he trusts in God, then he goes home right with God. That is, that is what it teaches. Why? Because a person is not justified. What does justified mean? We talked about this a lot. The word justified is the process of making something just. How do you make it right? It isn't right, but how do you make it right? So what is, so the word justified is saying that which is made right with God. So it says here, right, that this tax collector went home right with God. Uh, and that the other one did not. Interesting, huh? So here's the thought. I hope you're not trusting in your own good works. That's why people will ask the question, 
you know, if you stood right at heaven, if the gates of heaven or, or whatever, and, and ask you why they should let you in. And, and if you start listing a whole lot of good things or accomplishments, or I went to church, or I tried to live a good life, or never cheated on my husband or wife, or, or never stole, never whatever, that's, that's you're trusting in yourself. And if you could be right with God by the way you lived, then Jesus would not have had to have died. But Jesus did die, why? Because it was the only way. So that becomes the picture, right? Let's continue. Therefore, he goes on to say, for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and all those who humble themselves will be exalted. Now, humble and exalt, humble and exalt, right? So if you try to push yourself, which is, which is really kind of sad. This is why I think there's a key distinguisher between those who are truly believers and those who are not. Those who are his and those who are not. Is that, is that those that aren't his, or at least those who are extremely immature, have a tendency want to want to pump themselves up. Why? Because our world, you know, talks about confidence, being self-confident, being confident in yourself. In fact, there are whole classes, there are whole, you know, trainings for teachers of how do you how, how do you how do you do that with your with your kids, children, whatever. But when it comes down to it, uh, those who exalt themselves, they're eventually going to be humble. But those who humble themselves will be exalted. So there's this picture then of how a person is right with God, right? So, uh, so it's just, a, again, just a powerful little story about what makes a person right with God. Now, maybe this will help. And I've saved this for the end, but uh, there are several verses I'd like to share with you that perhaps, perhaps you haven't, you haven't made the connection or totally understood them yet. Let me just read them to you. Uh, Romans chapter one, verse 17. It says, for in the gospel, that is in the good news, that is who Christ is and what he came to do. In that gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. That is being right with God is manifest in who Christ is and what he came to do. And he says there are righteousness, that, that is mean a righteousness that is being right with God that is by faith from first to last. Why? Because those who are truly right with God are the ones who live by faith. And it was that, that verse that started Martin Luther on his, on his quest. That, wait a minute, this is what the church is saying, but this is what the scripture says. The church is saying, yeah, but you have to do this, you have to do this, and they have all these rules and regulations. And the scripture teaches that there's only one thing that makes a person right with God, and that's what Christ did at the cross. And that the only way you get into your life is by faith, right? It's a powerful thing. Let's read a couple of other Romans. Uh, David says the same thing when he speaks. Oh, Romans 4, 6. David says the same thing when he speaks of the blessedness of the one to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Credit means to give to put to your account, that is to make you righteous, not because you've had good works in your life. And then one of the, one of the powerful ones there is in Romans 10 verse one, it says, brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they might be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God. So yes, they're, they're gung-ho, they're religious. This is why you hear me say that a lot of times I mean, being religious doesn't make a person right with God. Uh, it, why? Because it's a work. It's, it, but that's what it says right here. <clears throat> he basically says, listen, I, I, I understand some of the people who are Jewish. He says that they are, they are zealous for God. He says, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. That is the truth. Here we go. Since they, uh, since they did not know the righteousness of God... And they sought to establish their own. Okay, so this whole system of religion is an attempt to seek to be right with God by all your works and rituals. And the scripture has that over and 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 over again. It has nothing to do with your good works, has nothing to do with religion, rituals. Uh, being a member of church, even being baptized. It, it is all about who Christ is 
what he came to do, and if you put your faith and trust in him, and that that's been credited. His, his righteousness is credited to you. Right? So since they did not know the righteousness of God, Romans 10, uh, 3, uh, they sought to establish their own, and they would not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the culmination of the law, so that there may be righteousness that is being right with God for everyone who has faith, who believes. All right? It, it's as straightforward as it comes. And that's why I wanted to do this today. Hey, so just some things to learn and then I will be done. It says here, uh, just three things quickly, and they're just review. I don't have to spend a whole lot of time talking about them, right? Number one is that justification comes by grace. That is, it's a gift and it can only be brought into your life by faith. By grace through faith, by grace through faith. And it never comes from works. Never, has nothing to do with it right? Nothing to do with it. That's hard for some people to truly get, but it is the teaching of the scriptures and the church, if you will, if I can call it the church down through the ages. If it messes up, it usually messes up in this point. It starts trying to manipulate, control people who attend church uh, by works, right? It's a, it's interesting. Anyway, so being right, justified, that is being right with God, only comes uh, by grace through faith. All right, number two, pride will keep you from God's grace more than anything else. You know, this Pharisee was totally blind to his need because he trusted in his own good works, pride. Pride blinds a person. It, it, it keeps them from being able to see the truth. One thing the tax collector had was, is he had humility. And humility allowed him to see himself who he really was. One of the hardest things to see is who you really are. But when you see it, you see who you really are, then it helps you see your need, which then it helps you understand the gospel, which then helps you understand the way it's gotten into your life. And so it is, it's huge. But pride will keep more people away than anything else. And then number three, um, no one has ever been denied God's grace on account of their bad works. Therefore, I guess the thought here, the best way to say it, is that there's no one that is so good that they don't need God's grace. And there is no one that is so bad that he can't have God's grace. Because it's not about works, it's about a gift. And the scripture teaches that the gift is given to everybody. So everyone, to everyone who believes, so it's basically just trusting. A lot of times we lead people in a prayer and just says, Lord, I, I, I understand who I am. I understand my need for you. I understand the gospel, which is who Christ is, what he came to do. And that's where I put my faith and trust. And since prayer is an act of faith, if it truly reflects, right, what's in your heart, then, um, then that is how a person becomes a believer, not about doing a list of things, of do's and don'ts. So anyway, it's a great passage. Fantastic, fantastic. And, uh, you know, and we'll be continuing this on. Next week, I'm going to talk about uh, perhaps the greatest known parable is the parable of the prodigal son. And so, uh, so I'm looking forward to share that, uh, share that with you next week. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. And let me uh, have a word of prayer with so we'll be done. Lord, thank you so much uh, for this day. Thank you for your incredible love for us. I pray for everyone who's at home, Lord, and just ask you to, to be close. And as we're, as we're walking through this, you know, in our community and in our, in our state and our country, and really in the world, um, continue to keep our eyes on you and not to fall prey to the fear that's around us. But God, most of all, we thank you for Jesus. And, um, and Lord, we're grateful for the difference that's been made in our lives. And Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, God bless. Have a great day.